Church. How are you this morning? I'm going to do that one more time. Exchange, how are you today? Why don't you stand up with us? Why don't you say hi to uh, 47 people? Say hi to 47 people. And we are going to, uh, we're going to jump in. We got our new song to start with. I want to see everyone clapping. I want to see everyone having fun this morning. Let's go. Good morning, Exchange. Let's give it up for the worship team one more time real quick. Uh, you guys can take a seat really quickly. I've got a couple announcements for you. Um, so if you guys haven't done so already, uh, we say it every week. We're going to keep saying it. Make sure you guys check us out on uh, social media. 
That's where we're going to keep you guys updated with everything going on um, in the life of exchange. Uh, keep you guys posted on location and details and all that fun stuff. Um, we have some prayer and praise cards in the cup holders uh, beside your seats. So we would absolutely love to get to know you better if you're new. Uh, if it's your first time, um, yeah, we'd absolutely love you to fill out one of those connect cards um, and tell us a little bit about yourselves. And uh, you can uh, drop those into the offering buckets on the way out of service this morning. And if you have anything that uh, you'd like some prayers for or uh, anywhere where God's been working in your lives, we, we just love walking with you guys through that stuff. So, um, yeah, once again, you can fill those out and drop it into the uh, offering buckets on the way out. Um, we do have a couple things going on this week. So uh, Wednesday, we have our all-in team night, uh, 6 p.m. at Micmac Park. Uh, we did it uh, last month, and it was an absolute blast. We're going to have some hot dogs and uh, play some football and maybe throw some water balloons around. It'll be a great time. So we'd love to see all of you guys out uh, 6 p.m. at Micmac Park um, behind the, uh, the parking lot in the front of the park there. But uh, check out social media for more information about that as well. Um, and Friday, we actually have a worship night, uh, which is going to be a blast at, yeah, uh, it's going to be so much fun at Parkwood Gospel, 7 p.m. this Friday. So we would absolutely love to see you guys uh, show up to both of those events. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a great week. So yeah, we're really looking forward to that. Once again, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, we've got all the details up on there. So make sure you check that out. Um, if you guys did come prepared with an offering this morning, uh, we're so grateful um, to have such a generous church. You guys can either uh, drop that stuff in the, in the offering buckets on the way out um, or uh, send us an e-transfer to give at ecwindsor.com. And um, <laughs> if you're new, no pressure. Um, we're just, uh, we're excited that you're here. But yeah, if you call Exchange Home, we're, uh, we're so grateful for your continued uh, partnership in that. So uh, yeah, let me pray and we'll get into it. Uh, Lord, thanks that we can gather here this morning together and uh, worship and um, hear your word. Uh, Lord, I just, I pray that uh, you speak through Pastor Drew this morning and, um, yeah, that he comes with, with all of the energy that he's been um, gathering over the last couple of weeks and uh, that uh, you just move through us this morning and, um, yeah, allow us uh, just to feel comfortable uh, worshiping you this morning. Um, as we, as we sing together, and um, I just pray for an amazing Sunday, in Jesus' name, Amen. You guys can uh, stand. Amen. Thanks, Chris. We love you, bro. Absolutely. Hey, um, not to preach before I preach. Hello. But uh, this morning we're going to be talking about how relationship is hard. Someone say amen. amen. <laughs> Relationship is hard, but um, I believe that God um, has a preference in how we are to, uh, to come to his throne. Amen. I believe that uh, we're called to be worshipers, first and foremost. And again, I don't want to get into it before I get into it, but I just want to invite you into a moment of worship this morning. I want to invite you into a moment where there could be, you know, a hundred and 125 people or so in the room this morning, but man, it's it's just you and God this morning. It's just you and the Spirit. So why don't we worship Him in spirit and in truth this morning? He's worthy, amen? Come on, even right now, I just pray that you would stir up your faith this morning in exchange church. He's worthy, He's worthy, and He's worthy of your praise. Come on. He came from glory, took on flesh to save the lost and mercy displayed upon the cross our redemption he's the hope for all mankind one name over everything one name over everything come on sing Jesus over everything
It's your faithfulness, God. It's your faithfulness, God. You've never failed us. You've never failed us, Lord. He's good, amen. So I led worship on Sunday. I can't, I can't help but go to church and worship on a Sunday, even when I'm on vacation. I went to a, I think it was like a missionary Christian reformed I mean, just put some words in there, and that's what kind of church it was. And there was like 20 people in the room, and most of them were much wiser than me. Okay, you guys are with me? Okay. Um, and I led this song, and it reminded me that the body of Christ is so amazing. Amen? doesn't matter if it's here at Exchange or down the road at Parkwood or at fill in the blank church up in Kitchener. When we gather as the church, when we gather as his body, I believe amazing things can happen. I believe that miracles can happen. I believe that when we sing songs like we just sang, it's not just words, but when we put our faith into action, these things can actually come to pass and we can see God move in incredible ways. And so we're just going to sing this song. I'm sure plenty of you know it. But we're just going to invite the Holy Spirit one more time in this room. Amen? Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You're welcome here. Come flood this place. Fill the atmosphere. Fill our lives. Fill those empty places where we're left wanting and, and, and hoping. And we know that you're the only one who can do that, God. So just be with us as, as we worship one more time. Nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I taste it and see. Sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone It's in your presence, Lord. Come on, why don't you just raise your hands And welcome the Holy Spirit into this place Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome
Let's experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience. Come on, let's sing that again. Let's sing that again. Let us become. Let us So Holy Spirit, we know that you're in this place. We know that where two or more are gathered, you're also here. And so we just say thank you. Come on, just someone thank him even right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for meeting with us. Thank you for loving us, for for teaching us, for guiding us, for giving us discernment when we need it. God, I just pray in the coming moments. Again, that you would speak loud and clear to each and every single person. It's not a mistake that every single person is in this room. It's not a mistake that every single person who comes across this on the web does. And it's not because of us. It's not because of a a name or a person. God, it's only about you. It's only about the leading of your Holy Spirit. So I pray that you would do that, that you would lead us. You would guide us into all truth this morning. We love you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. He's good, amen? Why don't you high-five 17 people? High-five some people. Take a seat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say hi to some people. Hey, I missed you guys. Everyone doing good? Thanks, Dom. <laughs> love you, bro. I texted you uh, the other day just to tell you I love you, and I mean it. You're the man. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. It feels like I've done this. Kelsey, thanks for being here, by the way. It's been, it's been a second. We're glad that you're here. Um, my name is Drew, Drew Riak. I am a lead pastor here at Exchange Church, and me and my wife, Andy, who will constantly shrink back when I say her name this morning, um, but she's right there, so you can, like, stare at her. Yeah, she's shrinking back already. <laughs> Clap in her face. That's super helpful, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
We, uh, we just got back from uh, some vacation slash working on vacation. Our trailer in Paris, Ontario has the internet. Thank you, Jesus. So when I mean work, I mean Netflix. Okay. Um, so it, it was good. Um, it was so, so fun to watch our, our daughter Zoe um, just kind of boot around the same camp that I grew up in, and she's with her girlfriends, and they're, they're going to Devo's in the morning, and they're going to the tuck shop, which has brilliant apple fritters. Amen, Rachel? Yes, Lord. That's good. And uh, yeah, it, it was just a great time. A, uh, I want to give a shout out to Josiah. Glad that you're here this morning, bro. You killed it in worship last week. I watched. And if it sounded like that online, it sounded a million times better in the room. We're going to fix that soon enough. But uh, yeah, you and Taya did a great job. Uh, a couple more rants uh, before I, I jump in. Uh, really from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for honoring uh, Pastor Ian and the youth team last week before they jumped into do we have a do we have a picture right there that was a picture on friday night of our very first exchange junior high meeting and, uh, and this is what I loved. This is what I loved. Um, so I was being, um, it's a weird dynamic for me these days because not only am I a helicopter parent um, with the beautiful blonde up there, um, I'm also like helicopter pastor. And I'm like, I was invited, okay? I was invited, but I'm, I'm helicopter parenting and pastoring. And this is what I love. Not one of the kids wanted to go home when it was time to go home. And the question was, when are we doing this again and so uh, I, I said to Zoe in the car I said okay Zoe you're the PK you're the pastor's kid give it to me straight how was it and she goes dad it was great I said okay what's the one thing we need to change what's the one thing already that we need to fix she goes dad we need more kids I said, that is a great plan. So we're going after some more kids. And again, uh, we're glad that the kids can hang out and be together. But let me just prophetically speak uh, to that generation that they are going to know the move of God. They are going to know his Holy Spirit. And, uh, and they are going to grow deeper in relationship with one another and with God. Amen. So we're praying for our junior highs. And uh, yeah, thanks for honoring the, the team. Uh, would love to to see you at team night on Wednesday night, 6 p.m., Micmac Park, or worship night, 7 p.m. At, uh, at Parkwood. It's going to be uh, a great time. I'm going to remember, um, if I can preach, see if I can remember how to preach. You can amen me, Daniel family, and, uh, and I'll, I'll get some encouragement that way. Um, but just being away, and, and again, just kind of thoughts everywhere and, and uh, you know, sporadic in time. Um, I, I was uh, reading some books, um, read actually a, a book that one of the exchange family gave me uh, just before I left, a beautiful book on, on leadership and, and reading a, a, another book. And one of the things that kept coming up was this idea of relationship. Someone say relationship. Say it like me to say Relationship relationship and um, and I'm just so thankful for the relationship that we have as a church here the thing about exchange church and what we say and we have a tagline and you've heard this and we're gonna get into this but we've exchanged see what we did there we've exchanged religion for relationship but I've been thinking lately that relationship is actually really hard amen that relationship is actually really hard. And because we want to be a relational church, that means we're inviting you into something that isn't necessarily easy or comfortable or relaxing all the time. God bless the reclining chairs. Amen. Um, but something that can actually be hard in moments because you don't really get to phone in relationship. I mean actual relationship, relationship that matters in life, relationship that actually encourages you and, and, and maybe sometimes disciplines you. Relationship has a lot of facets to it, and sometimes it's hard stuff. But I think that that's what Jesus is calling us to at Exchange Church. And again, you've 
heard this before, but there's something in my heart and there's uh, something that God has been speaking to me even in my own actions as of late where I've fallen short in relationship. And Holy Spirit it was reminding me, you can do so much better. And how do we do better? It's by resting in Him and leaning on Him and really going to that next level in our relationship with Jesus Christ. So this morning, we're about to get real, okay? We're going to talk about some real things. Is that okay? Not just a hype, uh, but if you listen long enough, I think it's going to bring you some hope. So this morning, I want to talk to you again from the topic, relationship is hard. Relationship is hard. Is this okay so far? You guys are with me? Okay, don't fall asleep now. Don't fall asleep. Uncle Ken, you're the man. Okay, you can just keep clapping on for me, buddy. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you, God, that you've called us closer to your heart. You've called us closer to relationship with you. And I pray this morning that um, you would deposit something into our hearts, into our thoughts. Um, not condemnation, not, not shame, no judgment, but in the places with others and more and most importantly, where we're going, places with you. God, I just pray that you would allow us to have a greater capacity for, for the relationship that you're calling us into. We love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, You guys ready for some really depressing news? I'm so glad I came to church today. There's joy in the house of the Lord. The average marriage lasts eight years. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. The average marriage lasts eight years. According to a U.S. Uh, census that went out in, in 2009, eight years is just enough time for you to be married to the person you thought you were marrying then to realize that they're not that person and they're constantly changing constantly evolving as a person and what you thought was this nice fantasy or or what could be it just doesn't really pan out i love you sweetheart can we get an amen, amen. this is a tough one today this is a tough one we 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 uh we do this thing called dating my daughter's not allowed to date until she's 47 We do this thing dating, and, and through dating, we're supposed to be finding the one for us, right? I got to find the one, my soulmate, my, my one true love. And we do this. How do we do this? We go really deep in relationship by siv sitting in dark movie theaters and not saying a word to each other for three hours long. Whew, that's a good relationship right there. And so we have this idea of who we're interested in who we could do forever with, and yet eight years, I feel, just a personal thought, that eight years is probably long enough to realize that you didn't marry the person you thought you married, and you're actually not the person that you were eight years ago, for better or for worse. Amen? We are constantly changing in relationship. Where we, we begin to say things like, who are you? Who are you? I didn't know that you were like this. No one told me that you were, were like this. And I, I think um, eight years is, is long enough to realize that you can no longer live in this projected feelings uh, of, of you to somebody else. That, that relationship is constantly changing, constantly evolving. I asked on my Instagram uh, this week, I said, help me preach. Help me preach. What is the hardest thing about relationship? And we had some really great answers. We had, like, we had answers like, you know, there needs to be great communication. There needs to be compromise. I think there was three C's. Someone got really Pentecostal on me. Gave me three C's, and it was, it was beautiful. And, and uh, the, the, hard, the, the answer that kept coming up on my feed, kept coming up, up on my feed. What's the hardest part about relationship? And the answer was one word. People. People. I even got this one. People suck. I was like, I feel triggered. Is this, is this about me? The hardest thing about relationship is 
people because, again, even especially in relationships, you cannot project yourself or, or your thoughts or your what you would hope for them to be. We are individuals, and we are constantly changing and growing and, and, and hopefully becoming more like our, our creator. Sometimes that's that's the hard part for us in relationship. Now, I, I have a confession to make because I'm preaching to the choir. Me and Andy celebrate our 19th wedding anniversary next Sunday. And I'm still trying to figure out relationship. I'm still trying not to people suck. Amen? Amen? It, it, it's hard. It's this, it's this delicate thing where you now know after 19 years we know each other, but we also know how to push each other's buttons. And we know what to say and what not to say and how to say it and how not to say it. And relationship is hard. Relationship is really, really hard. I've heard it said um, from couples, like, we've decided that divorce is not an option. I think people say that because uh, murder is too risky. Ah, we're having fun. Okay. We're having fun. Divorce is not an option, you know, because, because we're, we got to work this out. We got to figure this out. But somewhere along the line, the communication and the compromise and all of the things that relationship is actually called for, it breaks down. And we'd rather go back to the places where we were dating and sitting in quiet movie theaters where we didn't have to deal with real life. You guys with me this morning? My job is to figure out who Andy is over and over and over and over and over again. Can I tell you something really cheesy that I found out about Andy that makes Andy really happy? Like, this is her preference. And because it's her preference and it's not my preference, I actually lean into it. Sometimes I question it. Sometimes I think it's like this weird addiction and we might have to have an intervention for her. But every single day she says, can you get me a tea and an apple fritter? Every single, could you get me a tea? Hey, I'm going out. Could, can I get you anything? Tea and apple fritter. Or if it's later in the night, can I get you anything? Tea and Snickers. Can I get an amen? I'm more of a Twix guy. Yeah, yes. I see that hand. Um, this is, I, I need you to see this because we're going to go s somewhere a little deeper with this this morning because, again, I want you to do well in your relationships. But I think we need to do even better at coming back to this place where we understand how monumental, how important, how pivotal our relationship with God is, understanding that God has preferences. How you approach God, how you worship God, how you speak about God, how you live your life when Jesus isn't even in your lips or on your mouth or in your thoughts. He has a preference in relationship. God is a man. He has preference. Amen? I would never think of like, when I, when I was dating Andy, I never thought, you know what's always going to be a win? Jalen, tea and apple fritter. Bro, boom, crushed it. Every single, boom, I am the best husband in the world. Tea and apple fritter. But I need to also learn, like, in, in all of it, I'm loving her in her preferences. I can't love her and project on. It's nothing more than projection if I just love her the way that I want to be loved or thinks that she should be loved. Um, I definitely have. You've, you've read the five love languages. If you haven't, go grab it. It's really cool, really interesting. Uh, my preference is not her preference. Her preference is not my preference on how we love one another. But again, it becomes this beautiful dance of, of doing relationship well, but we turn our thoughts now to God because God is a person and he has preferences and the scriptures themselves. Listen, this is why we at Exchange Church encourage you to get into your word. Tonight at Young Adult Group, we are reading Song of Solomon. Hello. Oh, hey, don't get too excited now. <laughs> it's, the, it's his self-revelation. It reveals himself, and it reveals his preferences. And I can't know Andy unless she reveals herself to me. Could you get me a tea and a Snickers? Her hopes, her wishes, what she likes, what she doesn't like, 
Like I said, everything else would be a projection. Scripture tells us from the very start that God is a person. In Genesis 1, 26 and 27, it tells us that God created humanity in his what? In his image. God created humanity in his image. And we are people with a mind and a will and an intellect and emotions. And this is what we read because I want you to see this, that God created us. Just like he is. No, we're not gods. We're not getting into bad theology. Hey, okay. Um, but check this out. God has a mind. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 says, For who knows a person's thought except the spirit of that person which is in him, so also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. He has a will. 1 Corinthians 1, 1. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle, of Jesus Christ. God has intellect. Psalm 139, 17. How precious are your thoughts. Uh, precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. God has emotions. Psalm 78, 41. They tested God again and again and provoked the Holy One. God can get kind of upset sometimes. Especially that Old Testament God who needs a Snickers sometimes. And all of this on display, most importantly, in the incarnation of the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. All of this wrapped up into Jesus Christ, because here the plot thickens. Christians are in relationship with Jesus. I don't know, I don't, I don't know where you're coming from this morning. I don't know where you're at with this whole faith journey, but... Christians, if you call yourself a believer of the way, that means first and foremost, you rely on your relationship with Jesus. Again, this is where religion versus relationship debate gets interesting because Christians out there, I think people for the most part, don't really have a good grasp on how relationship works. And I know it's really easy to like throw religion away because that's characterized by like order and duty and rules and regulations and we don't like that. And so it's just really easy to throw that away, but they don't seem to understand relationship. And this is why I know that relationship actually kind of looks like religion sometimes. Because relationship that works, relationship that is healthy, actually has order and rules and boundaries. Are you with me? There are certain things that you can do in marriage, and there are certain things that you cannot do in marriage. Marriage has its routines. Marriage has its rhythms. Successful marriages are, are filled with order and boundaries and respect and honor and all of these things that Pastor Drew is still working on. Men, can I get an amen? Amen. amen. I knew Dom, Dom would, hear, I, I would hear that. You're working on it, buddy. I love it. So good. A relationship is not selfish. A relationship doesn't do what it wants. A relationship is much harder than religion. Like I said, you can phone in religion. But, but a relationship is this constant laying down of one's desires and preferences and picking up and paying attention to the other person that you're supposed to be loving on. Are you with me? Are you seeing this in context of your God? God is a person. God has preferences. Because sometimes I think we're trading in religion for a relationship. That means, God, strap in. You're going to be the passenger in my car. And I'm going to put this thing up to 88. And it might take off. Buckle up, Jesus. Because you're on my terms now. You're in relationship with me now. And it's really easy to say that I have a relationship with Jesus, but you don't hone in on rela what relationship really is supposed to look like. This is about giving God his tea and apple fritter. Are you with me? This is about giving God his tea and, and Snickers. It's about worshiping God how he desires to be worshipped how he calls you to live, how he desires to be in right relationship with you. It's not based on your preferences, but his. Because he's God and you're not. Well, that sounds really religious. It sounds like a really healthy relationship with the living God. Amen? Now, absolutely worth being in relationship with God. Yeah, absolutely. We are 
we are like the sole beneficiaries of this relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't deserve his grace and his mercy and his kindness and his goodness. Amen? I mean, that's my testimony. I don't deserve it. Every single day, I don't deserve the grace that he has showed me in, in my life. And, and the, the funny thing is, like, God, again, God desires to be with us. He longs to be in relationship with us. But there's really nothing outside of the Trinitarian relationship that he's in that he needs. He doesn't need us. We don't add to his life. You know what I mean? Like, you guys with me? I'm not trying to, like, jumble up any theology here. But he doesn't need us. He wants us. He longs for us. He, he cares for us. He wants to give us a hope and a future. But he doesn't, he doesn't need us. Quite fact, the opposite. It costs God everything to love us. His son hung on a tree so that we could be in real relationship with him. Amen? That's what relation, That's how God sees the relationship. God's heart is regularly wounded by his people. The ones that he loved. He's constantly grieved because of how we express our love or probably don't express our love towards him. But he loves us anyways. He loves us anyways. I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. Worship is our primary mission. Worship is our primary mission. We're at this place right now where, where again, um, because we're a nonprofit and, like, we're doing the tithes and the offering things, and you guys are absolute legends. You guys are partnering with us so good, and that's great. And, and we have a big heart for missions and a big heart for Windsor, Essex, especially the west end of Windsor. And who knows, we did something incredible um, last, last winter. Oh, gave over $700,000 worth of goods back to the community. We sat, I'm going on rants. We sat with Pam in Brantford this past week, and, and, and Pam and Andy were talking, and her daughter was there who does the, the picking, the sorting. And I, I just simply asked her, I said, I said, um, was that like a big deal? Was that like a big thing? And her, she just lit up the biggest smile, the biggest eye. She's like, that was one of the biggest orders I've ever done. And knowing that it went to kids and knowing that it went to this, like, it was this, this beautiful thing. See, we believe in these types of things. We believe in justice. We believe in missions. These are such huge things on, on our hearts at exchange. But it's not social justice, it's not education, it's not to evangelize or even equip the saints. All of these things are good, all of these things are needed, we care all about them, but our primary function as the church, hear me, is to worship our God, is to be found in relationship with him, and through relationship we meet his preferences and his preferences that you would worship me and I think we get it so sideways in the church I, I think we need to come back to the place where worship whether it's song whether it's a lifestyle whether it's giving whether it's a kind word worship in our life needs to be number one and everything is the overflow out from there the missions and the justice and all, all the great things that we can do, but worship is the primary mission. Pastor Bribe would like this, uh, but a Presbyterian catechism says, says this, what is the chief end of man? The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. We were made to worship him. We were made to enjoy his presence. And so why do I exist? Why are we in this place this morning? Why do you uh, make the choice every Sunday morning to come and, and to sing and to sit under a, a word? My, my hope and my prayer is that your heart just cries out, Lord, I need to worship you. I need to worship you with my family. I need to be found in community going after, after you. I, I, I see this a lot in the Bible. I see that worship is actually a, a response the writer of, of, of Psalms speaks to worship directed as Yahweh himself. 
And again, he, he definitely talks about justice. He definitely talks about the process of discipleship and all, all of these things, all of these nice churchy words. But the tone, the loudest tone in the Psalms is that we're called to worship God. You see that God sends Israel out into the wilderness to worship him, to begin to develop these, these moments or these ceremonies or these sacred um, things of worship and going after him. We see worship revealed by Yahweh to Moses in Exodus 7:16. I love this when when Martha was busy doing her work, Mary chose the better thing, to sit at his feet and to listen and to be in relationship and 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 to worship him in John 12:1 to 7. John absolutely like rips the critique of Judas. Judas freaks out in this moment because there's a whole year's worth of perfume poured over Jesus' Jesus's stanky feet. And Judas loses his mind. Are you serious? That's a year's wage. Like, do you know what we could do with that money? Let me tell you, worship to Jesus. It, like, pour, pour out your perfume. Nothing is wasted in worship. Nothing can ever be wasted when you pour your worship out on Jesus. I believe it's that the church cannot lose like a laser focus. And this is my heart as your pastor. There's a lot of churches in the city. I love you. I don't want you to go anywhere. But as your pastor, my heart for you is that you would be found in a lifestyle of worship to your God. And I believe that God has a strategy for this. And I don't think it needs to be hard. I don't think it's very difficult. He has uh, preferential strategies for the church because he is the one who's building it. And he is the one who gives us purpose and gives us life and gives us direction to live a life abundantly. This is God's church and he is the one who's building it. So I believe that he has a strategy. And God is the one, number one, is God does the saving. I wonder, like I, I wonder, and just so you know, we are getting into a bigger auditorium in the days to come because I, I've been praying and I've been hoping and I've been, I've been seeking God for, for the, coming, um, the coming fall season. I'm like giving God and you a break because it's like the first summer that we can actually go do anything. Amen? Go out and have some vacation. That's great. But I'm called. Yeah, yeah, that is worth a clap. I agree. But I, I, I believe that, that God is about to bring an increase and there needs to be a response and there's a strategy to it but God is doing the saving I wonder if those empty seats or the empty seats around you all you need to do is jump on Facebook and invite that one person all you do there's a new person here I'm not gonna call you out because that would be really strange I'm not looking at you dead in the face that would be really weird and uncomfortable and I'm never going to that church again but wouldn't it be crazy if we just got our invite on and then we let God build his church we let God do what he does. As we're enveloped in these moments of, of family worship, God does the saving, Ephesians 2, 5. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, even when we were sinners, even when life was absolutely brutal, God made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, 2 Timothy 2, 9, for which I am suffering bound with chains as a criminal but the word of God is not bound. There is freedom in the word of God. There is freedom in relationship with him. I don't do the, sa the saving here. The preaching, like this is the biggest amen you can give me all morning. The preaching is not going to do the saving. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to try not to take it personally. The Holy Spirit does it. Yes, we proclaim the gospel. Yes, we pro proclaim his goodness. But God does... The work, God does the conversion. Second, God does the adding. When God is saving someone, he adds to the church. I love the story in, in, uh, in Acts 2 where God added to the church daily. Numbers into the 3,000s on the first day and he added daily. Why does God add to the church when he saves? Is because he is a father and he understands the importance of family. I was saddened, or I have been saddened in conversations where I sit with people who decide that they actually think it's a 
good idea or it's okay to leave the body of Christ. Like we are the body. We, we need one another. And say like, oh, I, I, I'm good. I can, I can do this by myself. Or like, I don't need, you know, A, B, and C. I'm equipped. I can go do my thing. Can I tell you that that is the worst idea you can ever have when it comes to the accountability of being around other believers? Because we are called in relationship to spur one another on and cheer one another on. And, and, and again, I can't wait for my young adult group because who knows what we talk about and we talk about disciplines. And it's so beautiful. It's what God has called us to. Physical proximity together. I'm going to read this long one, Acts 2, 42, and we'll end with this if Gloria wants to come up. Acts 2, 42 to 47. And they devoted themselves. Someone say themselves. Themselves as a group, as a family, as a crew. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed, everyone, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They were selling their positions and their belongings and distributing uh, the, the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking breads in their home together, they received food with gladness and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. There's something about the togetherness that God is showing up in. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is about the relationship that we're called to. The preference that God has for you is that your butt would be in this seat. Or the church down the road. If we're not your cup of tea and apple fritter. Which is cool. We still love you. But it's the proximity of the saints that is a part of God's preference. Going to a local church and being fully ingrained in the physical life of the church is God's plan for every single believer. This year we said, I am committed. We haven't brought it up in a while. But I was reminded and maybe even a little convicted of my commitments. Because God helped me not be committed to my preferences and my ways and my thoughts and, and how I used to do it or how I think it should be done. But Holy Spirit, continue just like a relationship in a 19-year-old marriage. But even better, because you're God and I'm not, speak to me and continue to teach me and grow me and walk with me so that your church will grow so that relationship will grow between me and my God, so that relationship can grow between these people in the pews, not the pews. You know I've been in church for too long. In the recliners. It's, it is. It's religion over, or relationship over religion in the fact that I don't want us to be caught up in rules and regulations and, and do's and don'ts. But just a nice reminder on a, on a nice summer day that our relationship with God is so very important. That he is a person and he has preferences. I was even going to go here, but I, I, I didn't because I didn't have enough time. And I'll land the plane with this. I've heard, why, why, why do you ask people to raise their hands in worship? Because he, he is a person and he has a preference. If you want to talk to me about it, it's in the word. There's just so many intricate things about who God is and how he deserves to be loved and how he deserves our praise to be lavished upon him. And so, yeah, we've exchanged religion for relationship. 
but for all the times that I get relationship wrong here on earth and, and with my spouse and with my friends and with my family. God, could you take it all? Could you speak to it? Could you fix it? Could you help me, Holy Spirit, be reminded of how good you are to me so that I could grow deeper in love with you? That's my hope. That's my hope for this church. That worship would be our number one priority. Because that's what he wants. That's all he wants from us. It's to be loved. To be worshipped because of who he is. Not what he can do in our life. Because of who he is. He deserves it. I'm going to pray. And um, before I do, I want to invite you back next week. Next week's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I, I believe that there are so many different giftings in this house. So many different people um, who bring so much to the table. Again, that's why I need you. I can't do this without you. Hopefully you feel like you can't do this without me. That's what family is all about. We got five different people from this church coming up next Sunday morning to speak a message. It's called Five for Five. I'm guessing it's going to be like five for six or five for seven. We're going to, we're going to try to, to hone it in. But five different people, five different messages uh, we have Chris Brookbanks, we have Ian Kennedy, Sherry Taylor, Susan Taylor, and Stuart Cameron coming. It's going to be really, really awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a countdown. We're going to cheer them on. We're going to preach with them. It's going to be a great morning. It's going to be great for relationship and uh, just fun with family. So we'd encourage you to come, out, come on out next week. But let me pray, and uh, I'll leave you to your, to your Sunday. We love you, church. God, thank you so much for today. God, we, uh, we realize that, yeah, relationship can be hard sometimes. Relationship can be messy, and there can be a lot more questions sometimes than, than answers. But God, we don't want to be the type of Christians who tell Jesus to, to get in and buckle up. We want to be the type of Christians that submit our lives to your ways that we submit our, our thoughts to you knowing that you have a better way for us, knowing that in real relationship with you, sometimes it's going to mean sacrifice. Sometimes it's going to be throwing our preferences out the window for what you deserve because you are God and we are not. So help us in the moments where we fall short. Help us in the moments where we don't get it right but call us closer to your heart. Call us closer to relationship with you in a lifestyle of worship, in an expression of daily worship to our King, to our God. And as we get closer with you, I pray that you would help us with our, our relationships here on earth, friends and family and spouses and coworkers, all of those things. God, I pray that our, again, our relationship with you well, it would just overflow into every other area of our life. Again, there's no shame and there's no condemnation in this place this morning, church. And even right now, I just feel that if there's a relationship that has maybe gone sideways in your life that you still hold dear and, um, and maybe you miss or maybe there's something that needs to be worked out, um, yeah, I would encourage you. Um, pick up that phone, text, email, whatever you need to do. Um, but Holy Spirit, do it only you can in relationship. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Shane Church, we love you. Um, we'll see you Wednesday for team night, Friday for worship night, Sunday for five for five. We love you guys. Peace.